Yeah. Yes, boxing fans. It's your boy Big Nige, and welcome to another special edition Boxing Weekly Roundup. It's only right I have some different type of guests. To my left, yeah, to my left, I've got my guy Chris Too Slick Congo. What are you say, my brother? All good, my family. All good. All good. 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 And obviously a new member on the on the team and that. I like. To, I love. Bro, I gotta give a shout out to your name because. Master aficionado to me <laughs> is the cold yeah. oh, I saw it and I said that makes sense though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Danny Glover, my brother, thank, thank you for coming on. How are you, bro? I'm all good, man. Thank you for having me on. Much yeah. appreciated. If you don't know about Fight Fan TV Live, is it Fight Fan TV Live? Yeah, yeah. If you don't know, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to their team because I'm a fan still. Mm-hmm. And thank you for coming on, my guys. Thank you. Love, love. Where do we start, bro? Chris, you rank junior. Do you know what I'm saying? For those who don't know in context, obviously he's avenged his loss to Liam Smith this past weekend. Mm-hmm. And first thing that comes to mind, dominant, matured, and disciplined performance. So I want to pose to you guys, how would you assess his performance against uh, Liam Smith on the weekend? Go ahead. Dan, Dan, go first. Explain. Yeah, I'll go See for what it. you're saying. Yeah, yeah so um, for me... So what he did this time round, in the first two rounds, I noticed that there was a lot of grappling and wrestling. I was saying that since Liam Smith had a back injury, I was saying before that he needs to make this a rough, rough and tumble fight to try and like lean him over the ropes, bend him, pull him down, to try and work on his hips and back and stuff like that. So that was a bit of a rough, tough affair. And in the third round, he kind of did what he did in the first fight where he started letting off the uppercuts. Because remember, that was the round mm-hmm. where... He actually looked good. The first two rounds, he was jumping around like an octopus. And then the third round, he actually planted his feet, started lining up, cut it, won that round, and he got and he got tagged in the fourth. But this time round, he started the uppercut series in the third. Mm. And in the fourth, as Liam Smith came in, he dropped him with the uppercut. One thing I noticed as well, he was throwing combinations, head and body. So you can definitely see that he's been working with Bo Mack and listening to what they're doing because you already see how Terence Crawford was working up and down on Errol Spence. Of course, Stevenson um, is in the same gym and you see how he, he dissects opponents by working up and down. Um, his jab was very on point. He's always had a good jab, but he's actually utilised it even better now, as we saw once again, Terence yeah. Crawford's jab. Of course, that was the, jab. Was, was the, was the, was the neutraliser of my, 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 my poor yard man, Errol. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah, so... Um, yeah, from then he just yeah he just broke down Leo Smith bit by bit. Um, Leo Smith he's, he he had a lot of excuses he was talking about rolling his ankle, but you can't talk about you've got had always had bad ankles and you play football every week and you're wearing low cut boots when there's mids and there's highs and you're wearing low Same. boots. It's men, it's like what um it's like what Sydney Dean it's like what Billy Hoyle said to Sydney Dean in that film White Man Can't Jump you want to look good first win second because yeah, 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 you know sure. when you wear the low boots they do look more fashionable yeah, yeah, and more nice yeah. but yeah. they ain't giving you no ankle support so zero zero I've wore them <laughs> them, them little Kurt Angle boots <laughs> they, 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 they give you no support everywhere yeah. and then, then he said that he um the, the, the canvas was spongy so that's yeah, even worse for you I even so, he, so and then he said he was free stone so what are you doing at 14 and a half stone that means you're 202 pounds that means you're over the cruiserweight limit yeah, that's crazy yeah. like what what kind of and you knew you had a fight booked mm. because if you won the first fight you knew the rematch clause was activated yeah, for real, for real. and then yeah. Joe McNally was talking about oh Liam had to take the fight I told him not to take it and then um but he knew if, if he didn't take it, uh, Chris was going to run away. Chris was never going to leave the fight because he knew he had to spin the block yeah, because he yeah, had to the avenge the defeat. Yeah, yeah. So you, mm-hmm. really, you just you were just hungry for mm-hmm. the money quickly because yeah. Eubank was always going to come back to you. Yeah. So that excuse don't wash with me. But yeah, Eubank broke him down, busted him up in the 10th. Liam seek refuge on the floor in the 10th. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He seek refuge. I see him on the, he was on the dinghy boat. And yeah. then... He got yeah, and then he got stopped. I see him protesting, but he was well and truly beat. He had a big cut on his eye. Mm. Um, he was talking to Eubank, winding him up. Oh, what excuse can I have this time? Was it the left hook? Was it the right hand? Yeah, I saw that was it the, the elbow? The gloves but, off. but but now you've got a million and one excuses and telling me that you ain't got no excuses. Mm. Hey, the better man won. Eubank was sixty percent the first fight. He even told us. Yeah, yeah. But no one, yeah. but no one talks about that. Yeah, yeah, Everyone's yeah, talking yeah, about old yeah, Paul Liam. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For real, so, for real. yeah, man. Mm-hmm. For real. 
Congo, what yeah. would you say that was his best performance to date? I think so. I think it was a lovely performance by him. Um, the jab, the work to wonders, the little feints that he had to to um, offset Liam. Mm. Having Liam resetting all the time was lovely. The, the blinding of the jab to throw the uppercut was lovely. Yeah. And I just, for me, that was definitely his best performance. I don't think we're going to get, oh, well, I'm not saying we won't get a better one, but we're going to start seeing a lot more similar performances to that. And um, moving forward, I think he should stay with Bowmack and stay 100%. with the guys over there because if they can do that in four weeks. Was it four weeks? That was four weeks, brother. What do you think is going to happen when it's like a proper full camp against someone and they, they, I, I, I know facts that Bo McAnee's team, they study this boxing. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Students they of the stu- game. They're, they're students of the game. They watch boxing. They break, they break their opponents down. And you can just see it from, even from Terence Crawford, L. Spence, mm. you know. Even though, I, I, even though me personally, I feel like they were sat and off with Errol, but I just can't put my finger on it. Yeah. But, you can't, you, you got to give props to Crawford, you know, and he done his thing. And same, likewise, with, with Eubank Jr. He knew what he had to do to to win, and he done it. Very disciplined, on the jabber all the time. You, you, like, you could tell he was listening to his corner because Bo Mack was like, hands up, hands yeah, were going yeah, up. Shot. Obviously, you were there. Yeah, so I was right there. there. I was close. Yeah, yeah. hands were going up. Moving, step to the right, step to the left, working him up and down. It was lovely to see. Yeah, man. For me, what stood out was, um, like you man said, the discipline. But I felt like it was the, the maturity. I thought we saw the coming of age of Eubank. We've seen the gears that he's gone through. Everyone knows he's, he can fight. There's a brawler on the inside. Yeah. Throw those uppercuts, flurry of shots. And then I feel like with um, Roy Jones Jr., we started seeing the jab. He's I, like with all the times I've seen him fight, I never knew he was so rangy. But sometimes you will just admire the jab and flick it out. I think with Bowman, we saw all of that come together: the engine, the durability, the tactical awareness, knowing when to grapple, like you said, with the back injury and stuff like that. Very, very good at smothering in this fight as well. Oh, very like good. the first he's two rounds, literally, I was thinking, him. what is he doing? Like, what? Lovely. These times, when I went to go watch the first fight, when he was doing that jab thing, all it took was when it got to round four. Smith would just step in and just do what he was doing. So, like, for me, massive kudos. I won't say I've not been a fan of um, Eubank because he kind of likes playing that villain team, innit? Yeah. But now, I'm team Eubank still. I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah, sure. I've always admired him from afar, I'd say. But now, yeah, I back Eubank still. I back yeah, him. You got him, man. You got to. Man. I back him. Another thing that stood out for me as well was after that, that defeat, the mental strength to come back and block out all that noise. Mm-hmm. People questioning his chin. He's getting old. Durability. As man's leg doing wobbly, skanky leg. All of that. He blocked it out. Lifestyle. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And from mm-hmm. what I've always heard, he don't really cut corners. He's always disciplined yeah, in training. Point, you you sparred him back in the day, yeah, 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 yeah. So what, what was that like for you in terms of like how he's regimented and stuff? Yeah, yeah. good. It, 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 was a, it, was, it was a good experience for me. And um, I was definitely an experience at the time, but I think mm. it was good to get around him. And, and we done some good, good quality rounds. I didn't just go up there once. Yeah. And the one time that everyone seen it when his dad got in the ring. <laughs> yeah. I, went, I went up there multiple times. Yeah. I was there for like two camps. Mm. So we've done, we, we've had some good work together. And yeah, man, I just, I, I see he works hard. Yeah. He works hard. Danny, did it did it surprise you that he said that I think the interviewer said that this is the first time he's had a nutrition a tr- nutritionist like in my eyes he's a big name surely he should be able to have a, a nutritionist at this stage in his career in these what's I say I wouldn't say make or break fights but at this elite not elite level but a decent level where he should be getting nutritionists and he won't need to worry about what he's eating or stuff like that. Well, what it is, you know when some people are a bit gifted with their physique where they're normally a bit close to their weight anyway, they don't blow up too much. So he probably felt he didn't need to because when I, even when I've seen him out like at clubs and stuff, he's always in shape, he doesn't drink, you know, he's like a bit of water and the orange juice. 
but as you get older it gets tougher to bring the weight down and then i remember his um his his brother the late sebastian he he said in an interview that he's always been telling eubank like to get onto his regime like mm-hmm. them down proper the eye tool and on the yeah. alkaline and nutrition yeah. and chris is like Nah, I prefer to just eat my red meat and do what I want, and I just eat what I want. Mm. So he said he's always tried to do that. Um, I know Harlem; he's quite on that regimen yeah. as well. And he's a vegan, yeah. yeah, vegan, yeah. But uh, Chris, he he kind of does his own thing, but he probably now realizes that he, he the sixty percent it was real. Mm. So you can to get yourself up in percentages, you're gonna need a nutritionist, and that's probably. As they say, as his dad even said in that famous little quote, he go, it's a, it's a yard saying, mm. if you're not here, you are going to feel. And he felt yeah, it. So yeah, as they yeah, said, yeah, yeah, those yeah, who don't listen, you must feel so. Mm-hmm. He realised that's why it, sometimes it takes that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, sure. to, to, to get you on point and that's what he did. So yeah, well done to him. Nice. So if we talk about that, if we go through the rounds, obviously round one, round two, we've already touched that. Um, it was more of a whole jab, throwing a jab and a stepping and grappling. For me personally, round three, when I think he's not sussed him out because obviously he's fought him before, but you can see him getting comfortable. Like you said, he started throwing, the uppercut started showing. Would you say then that was the beginning of the end for Liam Smith? Because he wasn't really throwing back from, I'd say, four or five. For after the knockdown, he was just more passive. Mm-hmm. So what would you guys say in that sense? I think, um, obviously, Liam Smith... He had these excuses, but mm. listen, we all know in boxing, every good, every good boxer beats a fighter all day long. Yeah, and getting past his jab for me was just a difficult thing. Mm. He was trying to bow one over, bow the right hand over, but then again, you got a man listening to listening to his coaches on the jab, stepping to the right. Mm-hmm. How are you gonna bow one over? It was it was just so hard. For, for for Liam to get that one off and I feel like he kept trying it as, as much as possible and it just wasn't working and for me round four or five was definitely the beginning of the end because he got dropped round four yeah. round four he round four he got dropped his legs was gone he bank pressed but also took a step back as well yeah. because he knew he wanted to reserve himself and like like you you said it just being disciplined, man. You know, mm. he was very disciplined in that fight. Mm. Yeah, round five, he nearly, as he, he nearly, he nearly emptied the tank because he, he went for the stoppage. I saw that, and mm. I was thinking to myself, "Brad, I slowed down." Like he was throwing, 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 but he cl- a lot of the time, I don't know you, you being there, it looked like he he was catching him, but then he wasn't catching him. Mm. And then when I see him swiveling around, I'm thinking, "All right, bro, yeah. take a retreat yeah, now. Go center the ring. Get your breath back." Because, mm. bro, like. A lot of man would have faded off from then, but yeah. that's where his engine come into play. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. And then one thing, as you said, about Liam was looking for the bowl over, because if you remember the first fight, mm. he threw a bowl over, which caught you back, which actually made you man, touch down at first. Remember, yeah, his leg dipped. Yeah, People don't yeah. talk about that. He actually Shut went down initially, yeah, got up, and then that's when the, the mad cluster went in, and then, you know, the, 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 elbow, the, the elbow ting and the rest yeah. was history. <laughs> but um, so Liam was looking for that again. But the only shot I really noticed he was able to land was he was quite a bit dirty. He was landing a lot of shots oh, in the back I of the head, which was getting no warnings, mm, no mm, mm, pull-ups. Because everyone's now looking for waistband shots these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one's cooking rabbit punches, yeah, yeah, no one. Yeah, 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 so I'm real. like, what's going on, refs? For real, for real. Oh, there's rabbits. But yeah, um, let's talk about, obviously, that knockdown. It was a jab, and then as Liam... Dipped, he caught him clean on the money with the uppercut, and from then on, that's when I started seeing the back leg. It was just, it was never the same again. Shaky. It was never the same again, but it's almost yeah. like they always say like it's always the the legs. You can always see when the legs are about to go that it's it's time and not. So, so mm-hmm. obviously, from your experiences and dropping boxes, how much from that point on did you know? All right, it's only a matter of time before Eubank gets him out of there. See, see, for me, one thing I always say, all right. And I've said it before loads of times. I said, if I, if I can hurt you once, mm. I will hurt you again. It's only a matter of time, mm. right? So I feel like that was that was the thing for Eubank. Mm. To he's hurt him once. If he didn't take him out, mm. no problem. Back to boxing, I will hurt you again. 
and and that's what he done. I feel mm-hmm. like he just went back to his boxing, done what he had to do, back on the jabs, and yeah, man, he he, he did end up finishing him in the tenth. Mm-hmm. So it's one of them ones. Let me let me come to you, Danny. What, what what's your take on this excuses thing? Like, cause when Eubank lost, he took the L. Obviously, he said the elbow thing mm-hmm. and whatnot, but. He said, I'm, I'm going to come back and I'm going to beat him. He didn't even mention it. Did he not? He didn't mention it, although. Oh, it was only in the, um, sort of like, the gloves are off, is it? When yeah. you mentioned the sneaky elbow thing, yeah. So what's your take on, like, the whole, because obviously he looked flat. He didn't even shut up the fighter that he was in the first fight. And obviously, what annoys me with people, when they say, I'm not trying to make excuses, that's basically the opening sentence of when you're about to make excuses, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So... My man saying, yeah, I was free stone over, the back injury, this. And then obviously I even listened to um, his trainer on Boxing News, Joe McNally, and he was saying how he came into the fight 8%. Brother, who, why would you allow your fighter, if you know he's not fully ready for this team, why would you allow your fighter to go into a fight? Because of the money. That's a good, that's a good <laughs> question. And one thing I want to say about that, if you're allowing your fighter to go into a fight... Eight percent. I'm sure you could talk to your brother Obed. We are licensed coaches. Mm-hmm. When you go up to the board mm-hmm. and they're asking you these questions about if your fighter's struggling to make weight, mm-hmm. if he's not feeling right, what would you do? So you've answered these questions. You've now made yourself liable to get your license or to, to be called in by the board that you've allowed your fighter to go into a fight eight percent with somebody who is licensed to could potentially kill him. Potentially do something very harmful to him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, what if, what was your incentive, or why would you allow your fighter to go in, knowing he's not not sixty percent, not fifty, eight percent, which I don't believe is eight percent, because if he was eight percent, he would have wiped out in the first in round. In the first round, yeah. Facts. Facts. But the fact is, you're saying that. That lets me know that I would never let you train my children. Mm-hmm. I would never let you train any of my family members or a friend because I know that you don't have their best interests at heart. Mm. You're the type of trainer. When when that when that when that defeat comes, I wonder would you be in the changing room with me afterwards, or would I be in there all on but my own again? You look at the other side of it. Yeah, it was. It you can say it was Liam that that took the fight because he's the actual fighter at the end of the day. But then, have we not heard trainers say, "I'm not going to train you," because? I don't want it to be on my resume. Like I don't want it to be my work. Like when we've heard Mark Tick say he's not going to train certain fighters. He mm-hmm. he doesn't feel just like when Dominic Ingle didn't train Kel Brook for the Terence Crawford fight because he said, "I know you ain't fit to fight this man." Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And remember, true, Dominic true. Ingle was with Kel from he was a little kid. So that's yeah, where the love so is. Is that why yeah. they yeah. best that, interest? That went separate ways for that specific fight. That one fight, he mm-hmm. said, "You ain't you ain't fit to fight this man." Because he loves him, because he knows him from a little kid, mm. so he had his best interest. So I'm not training for this. Interesting. Mm-hmm. But, and, yeah. he, and he was happy to take him back with open arms afterwards. And you yeah. saw what he did to yeah. Amir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's true, all about true. these. Some of these, these, you know, Joey come lately's. Sorry, pardon the pun, yeah. Mister McNally. <laughs> but <laughs> they ain't got your best interests at heart, unfortunately. That is mad. It's crazy because I do rate. I do rate Joe. Mm. Like as a coach, I believe he's definitely one of the top guys in the UK. But when you hear things like this, it's just like, why Why would you do that, man? You know, why would you do that? Even though Liam Smith is the main guy mm. and is the man that probably said, look, I still want to make this fight happen. Mm. But still, man, the matter is every, everyone's got different morals, isn't it? you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, whereas some coaches wouldn't, Mm. Go in there. Some coaches would. They just just take the bullet and just go. Yeah, just mm. take the bullet and go. But as you know, as a fighter yourself, and as I was a former fighter, and even yourself, you've boxed before. We will go in there, mm. knowing we're ill, we've got a bad injury, mm. but that's the whole point of your coach. He's meant to as your manager. Mm. They're meant to save you from yourself. Yeah, yeah. They know you better than they're working with yourself. No, you. Know, we know ourselves deep down. We know we're yeah, but we go in the pride. Yeah, yeah. The pride. They man's not that whole yeah, because if we that. pull out, man's gonna think you're shook. Yeah, so we got yeah. all these. You got all them things running through your head. Mm. So you need a competent man who has your best interests at heart to save you from yourself and say no. Mm. Don't worry. 
you won't run from your fight. There'll be another fight. Or you've got that win anyway, so you can build off of that and get a, a potential world title shot. Because the world champions now at middleweight ain't saying nothing. So Liam Smith could have beat one of them, mm. to be fair, True. and then got a rematch with Eubank for a world title. I mean, his stock would have risen even then and further anyways. Exactly. exactly. So, and then one thing I talk when you're saying about what do I think about fighters making excuses, the one thing I don't like is there's a there's a, a little cliche line a lot of fighters tend to say, that wasn't me in there. Well, if it wasn't me in there, who was it? Who was it? And the, one, the other thing what annoys me is, you can go into a fight coming off of a cold illness, injured, but if you win, oh yeah, you know, the, the, the training camp went so great with everything we worked That's, on in the gym yeah, yeah, it all yeah, came yeah, off you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with the yeah. best team and I had the best nutritionist <laughs> and the best camp and the best this and the best that yeah. as soon as you lose ah oh, I had niggles mm. I had an injury I was coming off of this I was coming off of that it weren't me in there yeah. but had Liam pulled that off it was him in there wasn't yeah, it yeah, yeah. yeah. Facts. of course of course, Facts. Of course. We'll talk. I want to say to you Chris here mm. as a fighter how, like with all the fights that you've had, have you ever been 100% going into a fight? You're never 100 Is there such thing as 100% going in, I should say? Sometimes there is, sometimes there ain't. Like, I've had little niggas turn into a fight, but I've never used them as any excuses. Mm. Like when you're training, you get little niggas here and there. Mm. They come and go. Mm. It's part of the game. We, we, as, as us fighters, we push through it. Same way, likewise, in a fight. We push through it. I mean, my comeback, my comeback fight. I had a little injury going into it mm. um, when I just signed with Boxer, mm. but I still went in there, done what I had to do, yeah. and uh, and got the victory. And bearing in mind, I couldn't even breathe, but I still got in there. Like it was crazy. Oh. So it don't matter, man. Mind over matter. We do this thing regardless, and um. Like, I've never been into a fight with a major injury, okay. but a little niggle, you can get over it. It's all right, you know. And as fighters, as they say, certain times you will never be. Some fighters can be a hundred percent, but you'll never, ever, ever be a hundred percent. You know, because you have to remember in these training camps, a lot of it is to do with recovery. But a lot of fighters, they, they tend to really push themselves to the limit. So mm-hmm. even on recovery days, they're still working and in a fight week, they might have more weight to drop. Mm-hmm. So where that week you're meant to be tapering down, you still got to be exerting yourself so you can't be going into the fight mm-hmm. 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, and remember, you have to remember also, if you're doing a camp, you'll be sparring for that camp probably, what, 80, 100 rounds? Mm-hmm. Your hands, your wrists, they're not designed to be punching people in the head mm-hmm. for basically 400 minutes over a specific how many weeks if I was to go out or any of us to go out and every Saturday Sunday as as me for instance now I'm a doorman Mm. and I'm going out every weekend having rockers Mm. my hands would just be smash up you can't how can and then 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 say I knock out about 10 man Mm. but then the 11th time now Mm. I get done am I can I now say you know, my other hand injury. <laughs> you saw, That's you saw. I, 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 caught, I, caught, I caught, I caught him in the wrong part of his head. Yeah, he had a, yeah, that yeah, last yeah, guy, yeah, yeah, Big yeah. Dave, Big Tony, he had a tough skull. <laughs> this is what it's what happens. Your body's not designed for it in combat sports. Mm-hmm. So even when you're talking about the MMA guys, they're gonna have the and, and you, see, you man do like these mad heel runs, bunny hops, like mm-hmm. your knees are getting broken down, your ligaments, your tendons. So you you can't go into a fight 100, percent but you can you can go into it as best recovered as possible and you just got to get through it at the end of the day and you just and it's and you got to just be conditioned and have a strong will mm-hmm. definitely the good follow up good point still so still on the liam smith thing obviously the whole free stone coming down and shredding off bro ain't that detrimental to the body like yeah, from that's... both of you being fighters and, and having to make weight like Free stone before a big fight like this. I don't know how many weeks out it was, but mm-hmm. heading into camp and you're free stone over, like what? Yeah, that's madness. That's madness. Is that a lack yeah. of professionalism or 
or well, underestimating his coach work. said something about how he hasn't been rhyming and obviously he's back and he's let or something but I, I don't know um, but Freestone is way too heavy mm. way too heavy like I, it's, it's crazy I, I don't know how these boys do it um, yeah there's there's nothing more to say about that you can't be walking around Freestone heavy from your natural weight and if that's the case you're better. You're better off. But you know, what's so crazy. He's the light middle, so he actually moved up. That's what. That's what. I, that's what didn't make sense to me. Yeah, that that that's what did it did it make sense. Like, like are you Three gonna go to super middle yeah. now? Yeah. Are you gonna go? Are you gonna go to light heavy? Because mm. you walk around as a cruiser. That's massive. Like I, ain't, I've heard some fighters be free stone, um, free stone with that, and I'm like, how do you do it? Like, mm. You know, and eventually. They get found out, you know, they get found out. Yeah, you can't live like that for your, it shortens your career. That, that well, he's, he's done it. I, I don't know, maybe he's maybe that's why he's got the name Beefy. He's the real for real. man who's known to, yeah, it's a but he's only yeah, now, yeah. now it's come back to bite him. Mm-hmm. Now he's making an excuse, excuse for yeah. If you're blowing up Freestone, I bet, I bet that's not the first time you've done yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not your first rodeo. I know his brother Paul looks like a big guy. He's a big boy, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So he, he probably put on a lot of weight. Um, Tony Ben, who we know yeah. back in the day, he was even bigger back in the day than he is now and the other professional. So there's mm-hmm. guys who... who Ricky Hatton. Ricky Hatton, right. James Tony. Yeah. Um, a guy I'd have to be yeah. man. Um, even myself, I used to blow, blow up. Is it? In between? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's probably why I t- my career got cut short. Man. The dedication, I couldn't, I couldn't keep, I couldn't keep bringing it down. And then that yam and banana and dog, there was something about the octo, man. I couldn't, I couldn't leave it alone, so I just had to knock it on the head. Um, so yeah, but yeah, and the things when you te- when you do, and then the thing is, it's detrimental to your camp because really, then you're doing a a fat camp. Rather than mm. working on your craft working and your boxing skills, real skills, yeah, working on losing weight, man. development, yeah, you're working on losing it's weight. Crazy. So that so you never you, you weren't going to be I'm saying the ring because all you're doing is hitting the treadmill, mm. wearing bin liner suits or the blue sweatsuits they've got these suits, days, yeah, and yeah, saunas yeah. on spin bikes and <laughs> all, the, like, all the rule breaking they say in the handbook of, a, of what a coach should not allow a fighter to do. I know he did it. Yeah, in six weeks you can lose three stone. Then you need to be making a new exercise video for YouTube. Yeah, or something. yeah, for real. Hundred <laughs> percent. I know you did it very dangerous, especially if he couldn't run. Mm-hmm. So how did you lose it then? Yeah, and if you yeah, yeah. for real, because running is one of the main things that help you show off the weight. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what are you doing? What was you doing? That sounds very dangerous in itself. Mm. That's crazy. That's crazy. But I'm used to that own thing. Of lucky, I don't have that issue. You know, mm-hmm. I'm never too far away. Of the fighting weight, even at the moment, I'm probably about 17 pounds away, 16 to 17 pounds, and that's not much, even though so, to some people it's a lot, mm. but to me it's perfect, man. And it's just staying in the gym, man, so mm. I'm injury free, looking after my body, eating the right things, and that's what keeps me. That's why to this day I can still make work with. Yeah, I, I have a few bad eating habits, but. Mm. I'm, it's not in a necess- it's not in a sense where I'm eating way too much. Sometimes I'm eating less. Okay, which is which is still bad. Is that as bad? Well, it's a little balance, isn't it? But yeah. it's about balancing and for real. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm all good with that. Where if it wasn't me, <laughs> I would struggle, bro. I'm a snacks man. Man, I should yeah, put some crisps. Yeah. Listen, everyone, everyone's on snacks. No, I'm not a snack person. You know, it's yeah. just me. It's the meal portion. You must see my yeah, post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The place yeah. I'm ballistic. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. I love I love two squares or three squares, but the place is just ballistic. So I have no time to snack. Uh, I'm just okay, ramming. You know when you just yeah, yeah. You just slump yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. I don't I don't snack. Uh, okay. Crazy. I hear that story. Uh cool. So we have to give credit to despite even though it was you back's performance, we have to give credit. To Brian McIntyre, Bo Mack, mm-hmm. Terence Crawford's trainer. Mm-hmm. Surely my man wins training at the end, man. He has to. I mean, he's had his two biggest wins of his career. Mm. One was probably on the fight of the year. Yeah. Fighters. Two was probably 
best mm. comeback of the year. Facts. Like, when I mean best comeback in a, of the year, for you to get knocked out in four rounds and come back and knock your opponent out in ten, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's got to that's got a mean Saturn. That's got to show something. Yeah. Mm. So, me personally, coach here, yeah. mm. for sure. What about you, Danny? What do you say? Church coach of the year. I agree. Yeah. If you can get a comeback like that, where everyone's saying punch resistance is gone, mm-hmm. you ain't living the life, you're done, you're dusted, you've been, you've just been taken out by a night midway where you used to be able to take big shots off of Drew Groves, mm-hmm. Arthur Abraham, Rob James DeGill, Avni Yildrim, and then my name Budgie Spike O'Sullivan, mm-hmm. and then you managed to make him look like really the next gen um, Eubank, then yeah, and then plus he's got the biggest the, the wing in the biggest event of the year in Spence Crawford yeah. and that was just a proper domination um so yeah he's, his stable's looking good he's got obviously Shakur Stevenson in the gym and then the brass area is looking very serious man so yeah, so yeah, so but so what we got a really what we've got to now see is when he wins that next year how does he do because there's a thing where there's a curse of trainer of the years every yeah. time someone wins trainer of the year all of a sudden, their fighters start losing. It yeah. happened to Freddie Roach. So happened to um, John David Jackson. Mm. Happened to Derek James, who just won it last year. So now with Bo Mac, bro, I'm sure you're going to touch on it soon. It's the curse has already kicked in. It's already there within within days, bro. <laughs> within 24 hours, bro. Before I even touch oh on that, bro. Like, for me, the most the fascinating thing with Bo Mac was, like you said, four weeks. Like, there's this stigma that um, Eubank is hard to train. For most of his career, he didn't have a trainer. Mm-hmm. He's had Ronnie Davis there, but does he really listen to him? He had, um, I think he had a one fight with Adam Booth. Then he had that American Don for the, the girl fight. And then obviously he's had Roy Jones Jr. And that's ended on a sour thing. So, like, finally, he's got a trainer. Not only does he listen to, but he executes the game plan and his discipline. The the, the, the the sky's the limit right now for him. So that just shows as well this whole stigma of being, him being hard-headed. Sometimes it's just what the actions and knowing how to man manage your, your trainer and being able to get the best out in that small space of time. Mm-hmm. But trainer of the year and in 24 hours, like, for those who don't know, like, Bo Mac was on his, on his travels back to, was that Atlanta? I think he's from Atlanta, isn't it? I thought he's from... Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska. Is he? I thought well, so. I thought when I read it, they said he was going back to Atlanta. Or so oh, maybe I, that's I, where I, he lives. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe he just trains that, that gym. Yeah. But um, he got held at customs for holding a firearm in his, um, in his suitcase. The first thing that comes to mind is that, how did he bust through to come in the UK in the first place? With the, that's what I don't get. That, is it a private jet thing and he's come with Eubank and then obviously Eubank's going to, He's in Dubai now, so as my man now going back to Manchester, and he's, it's just like literally you could be the top of your tree, and then life just hits you, says boom. Now Welcome back to reality, man. fam. Man's in jail in Manchester. Bro, in money till next month, bro. Mm. Like, but what's your, I don't know what you must take on it. Is it's just like, is it my man? Because this I got this thing with Americans like they're quite naive, like they live in their own bubble, innit? Mm. So they feel like. Things that run in their country, they can go run it in other people's countries. Why yeah. are you coming to the UK on Me a boxing personally, gig? I feel like he had it in America in his suitcase. Mm. Right? He's probably fought on a plane. Oh, sugar, I got my thing on me. Yeah. He's come to the UK confident. He's come come with it, like, and he's bust true. So he's probably thought, hold on, mm. if I can get true with it. Man, I'm getting, I'm going home with yeah, it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and obviously on his way back, they've just grabbed him. So, I think that's what it was. Mm, that's my take on it. Me, I, I'm out of America. Remember, you got to remember, in America, I state to state. Mm. Some states allow it, some don't. Hence why, was it Devin Haney? Mm. Went to some trouble recently. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. The states with. With the WAP, but it was a security, it was a securities one or something like that. Mm. So yeah, Bo Mac maybe had it on him, 
maybe he didn't realize um or maybe uh, i think he probably didn't realize but what he should have done he should have just left it somewhere and just fall if he knows he's because maybe he did fly in privately mm. where he's not he, the checks ain't gonna yeah, be stringent intense, yeah. if you know you're going for an airport customs Manchester bro. After, was it a long din? No, I was in the airport. I was in Manchester bombings and whatnot. So, that you know things are tight. Tight nick. But he don't know about that. Obviously, for real. Yeah, they don't know about that. Um, so, yeah. And he just got yammed, um, unfortunately. But, yeah, free bow map, man. For real. Free for bone, real. Man. Free bow map. Free bow map. He's on remand, bro. Like That is crazy. <laughs> that is mad. <laughs> like, I, I, when Remember I read it, I was UK just like. Jail. Gee, from America, bro. What's mad is it wasn't long ago when mm. my man was celebrating with Chris Eubank. Not even back, fast rewind it back to when he was with Terence Crawford, yeah. undisputed. Mm. And then life is just man's in jail, bro. Like casually. Crazy. And the thing is, he, he he had problems even getting a visa to get into the country anyway because mm. he had previous for gun possession, gun charges, drugs charges child support um, charges. Um, so, because he said he was trying to get um, some citizenship over here, but that's definitely not going to happen. Nah, a little weird. Um, he wanted to move here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted Is to move it? Here. Yeah, yeah, he, he wanted, wanted to train some fighters. Here. A lot of American trainers, they've been talking about coming over and setting up shop because they realised boxing is booming over it. Even mm. when you're talking about the small to medium full circuit, mm. it's quite lucrative. Whereas in America, it's either... Vegas or nothing. Even Madison Square Garden, the maker of boxing ain't even popping like that. Mm. Most of the fights over there is being put in the Hulu theater upstairs. Yeah, now. yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, so it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. there's not many options. Whereas over here, we you can go into the Nottingham Arena. You can go up to Sheffield. You can go down to Bournemouth these days. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're even talking about what's it in Brighton. Brighton yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, as well as obviously the main ones, Manchester Arena. O2 Arena, Wembley, Tottenham, Tottenham, um, Birmingham, NEC. So yeah, we've got it's, there's a plethora of um, options over here. So which is quite a thing where the Americans are looking at it. Even the ones who train female boxers, the women have probably probably told them, "Hey, mm. this is where we need to be fighting." So they're thinking it's more money, more yeah. So um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of sad that he, he he might be that dream might not work out for him. Oh yeah, but. Hopefully he gets back up to America and he can get some good recruits out there and still do his thing. For real, yeah, for real. Free ball night, man. Hopefully he managed to go home at some point, man, because mm. I can't imagine what man was doing now, man. That's what I'm saying. Hey. But yeah, on a, on a positive note, the <clears throat> question I want to pose to you guys is, I already said it before we even started filming, I want to see you bank in the world title fights. So when he called out Triple G... Um, obviously with Conor Bairns and whatnot, and he said that Conor uh, Triple G's holding the belts. I'm like, I swear he relinquished the belts time ago. I ch- other than Jamal Charlo, um, and obviously Yanni Beck, Yanni Beck he even called him out. It's just like you're calling everyone else, but you ain't calling me. Mm-hmm. The other two brothers, um, Arislandi Lara, I can't mm-hmm. remember the other teams out. Um, oh, it's the you know it's the it's the. Oh, it's the Italian guy. One second. He's fighting Yannick Vinci- for no, unif- yeah. unification, isn't it? Vincenzo Gu- Gutierrez. Brother. Like I'm Germany. Not, I'm not being funny, but surely my man can get a top. Of Yannick I might have to leave that one alone, because what I've seen of him, he looks he looks tidy still, but... Very tidy. Very, yeah, he's very Dental, tidy, Dental, Dental but Denzel gave him a good, gave fight, him a good run. Yeah, true. Um, Denzel, 100, bro. I think if Denzel fights him again, Denzel beats yeah? him. Yeah. Yeah, if he had more self belief, yeah. it's kind of like Craig with Bivol. They started to believe in themselves mm. too late into the fight because yeah, you're questioning yeah. yourself: Are you world class? Can I take a world class fight? Mm. Can I hurt a world class fighter? Yeah. And then by round seven, round eight, you're, you're chasing it. Mm. Whereas if you go into the first round believing I know, mm. then you've got more rounds to accumulate your points. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think if then to fought him again, he could he he, he he could pull it off. Mm. Mm. So let me pose to you, man. Who would you like to see uh, Chris Eubank fight next? Would you want to see the trilogy with Liam Smith? Connor Ben? That's dead in the water. <laughs> or Kel Brook? I'm going to pose it to you, bro. I don't want to see him in with Kel. No, I want to see him in with Connor Ben. Yeah. 
but I also want to see him in, see him fight for world title as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he is. I just want to see him win that world title mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, but obviously Conor Ben is another massive, massive fight. So he's not gonna say no to that. And it's even bigger now. Yeah, hundred percent. Even bigger now. Hundred percent. I definitely want to see that fight. Who are you paying? Um. Well, Gutierrez is fighting Yanibek in a unification. Yeah. Um, Carlos Adames is an interim mm -hmm. champion. So the only fight, the only champion available is Erislandi Lara. Mm -hmm. So I'd wanted to see him fight him. Erislandi Lara is about, what, 40 years old? Oh, I checked it. I don't yeah. 40, bro. Yeah, I was just like, when did he even win a middleweight? Yes. Yeah. Do and you and know he, what I mean? And he was a light middleweight. I remember when Canelo fought him. Yeah, yeah. that's what, that's what right. I remember. When he gave back him, in the day. Yeah, when he gave him mad fits. But... Them, them legs and them knees ain't back, there, no, like no, back no, in the no, day yeah, them yeah, cues yeah. yeah the stupid it feels like there, eroding man. yeah and I see him fight um, Spike O'Sullivan mm. so he, he stopped him but he, he looked like old and you back can beat him and I'd like to see him win the world title because it will kind of even though you know I don't like family feuds but you know he's always had a thing where he's been battling against his dad where yeah, kind yeah. of sock it to your dad like you said yeah, I would have become yeah, world yeah. champion yeah. and look I've done it like look at me now I've won a world title so yeah I would like to see him fight Erislandi Lara, get the belt, and then the the, the Ben fights there on the yeah, table, same. and but he's completed that mission, that life goal, that he's become a world champion. Because yes, he's got the he's had big big nights and big fights, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. he's had one world title shot against um, Jules Grove. Jules Grove's and he come up short, mm -hmm. but this one I think he will win, and this is the best. It's the best um, time. And the best opponent to best chance of him winning the world title is now. Yeah. So I I'd, I'd do it next. Let's yeah, not I'm even sure. forget Jamal Charlo's even still champ as well at that WBC. But he's he's occupied, mm -hmm. and that's a tougher challenge. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather him go for uh, Lara, yeah the, the easier the easier option mm -hmm. of Lara, and he'd beat him. So if I was him, I'd do that and then go look for the Ben fight. Look for the Ben fight. And you that way, be, you think he beats Ben off of that last performance? Yes. Yeah. Especially as Ben's been out for quite a while. Mm. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Win the world title. That that Ben fight will not always be there, but it will be there. That Ben fight will always be there. You reckon? Mm -hmm. Because of their names? Yeah. Because of the dads. Mm. For sure. And everyone wants to see that now. Facts. So he can, yeah, he can play possum right now and just go win a quick title. I don't know why he still wants Triple G though. That no, he probably he, he, he I don't think he watches boxing that much because he thought Triple G had the belts too. He yeah, doesn't realize they've been vacated and scattered. Time ago, mm, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I don't think he watches the landscape like that. Mm. Interesting. But yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, you back for a title, and then like you touched on before we close up, if he was to win a, a world title, beat Conor Ben, and call it a day. Do you think he finally comes out of his, the shadow from comes out from the shadow of his dad? Yes, once he wins the world title. Yes. Yeah, but that's definitely. Once he gets there, once he wins that, that's it. He's out. Mm -hmm. He's out. He's his own. Even though, to, to some extent, he is out already. Mm -hmm. You know, his dad don't. I don't know. Obviously, his dad went at the fight. Mm -hmm. or I don't know if he was there. The idea to see him mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, I think he's done well in his career, you know, but he's always come up short against the world champions. Yeah. And now I, I believe he, it's his time to win a world title. Flash. Mm. Nice. No, I'm rooting for him. I'm a fan. Can't even lie. I'm looking forward to see, especially if it's with Bo Mack, free Bo Mack again. If it is with Bo Mack, I want to see him go on to win a world title right now and, and do the thing against Ben. Yes. Yeah, because that's something fans can never take away from you. When you win a world title, title for sure. When you look back, you know, when you're a Greg that they give you the Greg kids that were as originals, you can always say, you know, I was a world champion. Like, and because everyone, if he goes out now, they're never going to allow that IBO one. No one is rating mm -hmm. that over now. Even though in time it might grow to something. Mm -hmm. But for now, they will never classify him as a former world champion, probably. Mm -hmm. But if he beats Eric Landy Lara for the WBA, you know, that is a legit belt and you can never take that away from him and that will be part of his legacy that he was also a former world champion, just like his old man. Yeah, for sure. For real, for real. And I think that's the perfect way to end on that note. Once again, that's it with me, 
went fist fight with Big Nige. I want to give a big, big shout out to Chris Too Slick Congo for coming down. Danny Glover from Fight Fan TV. Listen, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And tell a friend to tell a friend. We're air, man. You get me? But love and peace. Done now.